All right. Uh, welcome, um, calculus folks, for uh, the lesson on product rule. Hopefully, you've tried this warm up. I'm going to take this up quick. Uh, bad news what should work doesn't work. It's the first sort of thing in, in, in calculus which doesn't make sense. We saw that yesterday if we had uh, the sum of two things. So if we wanted to take the derivative of x cubed plus 5x squared or something like that, that we could just take the derivative of the two pieces and then add them together. The sum of, uh, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivative, but for product, we're going to see bad news. And that's what this warm-up was about. Hopefully, you, you found this. So find the derivative uh, p prime. And so we don't know how to take the derivative of a product yet. So we expand it. And then once you take it and write it as a polynomial, pretty easy. You're getting used to that step there is easy now, right? And so the derivative is uh, 6x squared plus 22x plus 15. As long as I haven't made any rhythmic, arithmetic errors, uh, no problem. So then write p as the product of two smaller functions. So it makes sense that that would be f at x, and then that this is p at x, uh, g at x, right? And so dandy. And then if I take the derivative of the two pieces, take the derivative of f, I get just plain old 2, and I take the derivative of g, and I get that. But then it says, and that's this one, show that p prime at x is not equal to f prime at x times g prime at x. And it's not. Okay, so that's bad news. We would have thought to find the derivative of a, of a product, we just take the derivative of that, take the derivative of that multiple, and that doesn't work. So the question is, is what's the shortcut? Because not always are we going to be able to multiply this out. It's going to be a pain sometimes to multiply this out. So we need to, to find a product rule, and that's what we're up to today. Um, notice. And you don't have to write this down, by the way, folks. I'm going to go through this. Uh, but the conclusion is going to be important. Uh, we could go back to first principles, right? Whenever we're stuck, go back to first principles. And so we've got, you know, p prime at x is the limit at h. This is first principles. This is the, the first principles definition where p is this product, right? And so p at x plus h Notice I took out the x and I put in x plus h in red there, just so it stood out. And this is going to get nasty, folks. I, I, I hope no one faints, because it's going to get nasty. Um, because this expression is this expression. Right? That whole thing is this. Subtract p at x, which is this thing, that product over h. Um, and then, if you notice, there's something going on here. If I, when I multiply this out, um, I expanded this red and I got this red, x squared plus 2. I expanded uh, this and collected like terms. So there's a 2x and a 5, 2x plus 5. And essentially what I'm looking for is I'm looking for stuff to cancel out. So I've got this 3x, is this 3x, and then I've got an x squared there. Notice that these black terms are ones that only have x's in them. There's no h's. Right, so I'm looking to collect those up. These green ones have H's in them, so I'm going to collect those up in a bit. What is this big, big mess? Well, essentially, I'm thinking of this as uh, I put the black stuff together, x squared plus 3x, that's that black stuff. I put the these stuff together and I just rearrange them, right? So I put these things in this bracket and these things in what these arrows are, just hang on. I'll get to that in a second. Okay. So you see this this first step. Now what do the arrows mean? The arrows mean essentially I've got an A plus B times C plus D. I've got a huge foil where there's brackets. Um, and the big thing is is I notice I'm looking over here to this term, and that times that is positive, and this one's negative. So something's going to happen here. And notice that times that, this bracket times this bracket is this first bracket that I've got in red. Um, then I have one in green. I've got 2h times this bracket 
there's this green one. This times this is that. And this is nasty, I realize. I, I told you, I hope nobody faints. And then this times this is that business. Um, finally, 2H times this thing is 2H times that thing. That's that black bracket. And you see 4 there. And you don't have to be writing this down. And then I just copied that down. The reason why we took care of this is so I see this is going to cancel. This yellow stuff, cancel. Gone. There's a positive and a, and a negative. That's gone. And then, of course, the big thing is, is then on these terms, if these are gone, these things have an H in them, don't they? And so there's an H. That, that's gone, remember. There's an H there. There's an H in this bracket that I, that I took out there. And there's an H in, well, there's an H there. And so that means I can cancel the H on the bottom. I've kind of got a yellow dot over that. And why is that awesome? Well, that's awesome because then I've eliminated my H on the bottom. And then I can let H go to zero. And there's my derivative. Right? Well, and I know I could expand that and all that other business. But I want to show you something. This 2 was actually the derivative of f. Remember, f was 2x plus 5, so f prime at x was just 2. g prime at x was just 2x plus 3. And this, is, this first thing is, is f prime. This thing is g. This thing is f at x. This thing is g prime at x. This is actually the product rule. When I've got a product, I take the derivative of the first, write down the second. I write down the first, derivative of the second. This is the product rule. Wow, not that nice. And there it is. That is the product rule. F or P prime at x is F prime at x times G prime, uh, Gx uh, plus F at x, G prime at x. And even though it looks nasty, um, it's actually not that bad to, to do. And so back to your note. Um, back to your note, uh, let's get that uh, conclusion. So P prime at X is equal to F at X, G at X. So, so I have a product, then I take the derivative of the first one, write down the second one. Plus, write down the first one, derivative of the second one, and then tidy up after that. In Leibniz notation, if I have the derivative of a product, I take the derivative of the first one, and then write down the, the second one. Plus, write down the first one, derivative of the second one. There is a proof of this, and this is this will be from first principles, and I'm just going to post this with this video that you're watching. Uh, what's next? Are we into examples yet? Okay. Uh, sort of. Use the product rule to develop an expression for the extended product rule. Well, one way, one way to think of this is I could think of this as f at x times some other function, right? So if, if I wanted to find the derivative of this, then I'd take the derivative of the first thing, write down the second thing. And the, the second thing happens to be a product as well. Plus, write down the first thing, Oops, write down the first thing, no derivative. Write down the first thing. And then the derivative of this. Now, the derivative of this is actually a product rule in itself. So if I wanted to take the, the derivative of this function, it's also a product rule, right? So how would I take the derivative of this? Well, this stuff I'm going to write down, f prime at x g at x, h at x, but this I still got work to do. Well, how do I take the derivative of, pro of a product? Well, I take the derivative of the first thing, write down the second thing. Then, I write down the first thing, take the derivative of the second thing. Now, notice, if I wanted to tidy this up, I'd multiply through by the f prime at x, and then a pretty nice pattern uh, gets uh, developed here. f at x, 
g prime at x plus, now I'm going to have f at x, g at x, h prime at x. Now you notice what's going on here? That if I had three things multiplied, the extended product rule, take the derivative of one, write down the other ones. Take the derivative of the second one, write down the other ones. Take the derivative of the third one, write down the other ones. And that's exactly what we've got, right? One, two, three. So if I wanted to, to do this one, what's the pattern? P prime at X is take the derivative of the first one, write down the other ones. Plus, take the derivative, darn, take the derivative of the second one, write down the other ones. Take the derivative of the second one, write down the other ones. How many times am I going to have to do this sort of thing? Four times, because each one is going to contain one derivative. Take the derivative of the third one, write down the other ones. Take the derivative of the fourth one, write down the other ones. And notice that whatever this is, lots of algebra work to do after to tidy this. Um, dandy. Okay, there's more rules, but I'm going to pick up the uh, these rules in part two.